first of all, hi everybody. I know that today we have people from different different countries, and I am happy to be speaker today, and I'm happy to share my experience. We have 40 minutes, and I have a goal to create as much as possible values value for you today. And let me tell you a couple things why you can trust me today. First of all, I'm from business and more than 10 years I worked in sales. Last seven years I'm helping with agile transformation around the world and I also created a system sales with agile which helped um, change mindset and all sales around the world and help them to be more agile. But today I'm going to share my experience and my talk was about like seven law of successful, successful agile transformation. I would say it is my beliefs, it's my experience. And today I'm going to share my experience, which I collected for last seven years. And this experience helped me to be pretty successful in agile transformation. And I hope it will help you to be successful as well. Anyway, okay, let's start. What am I going to do? I'm going to show you my beliefs and create and tell you some stories from different case studies from different companies from different industries and uh, first first law or first belief that agile is a mindset and the main idea of this mindset to help our customers to be happy right and in business agility domains we have customers in the middle and probably all changes in companies we became we start to help uh, our customers be happy, right? But there are two, several things which I would like to uh, notice. First of all, we have different types of customers. We have customers outside of company, right? But we also have customers inside of company and we also have vendors and uh, different um, partners, right? And the main idea always know exactly where is your customers and help and understand their needs and help them to be happy. Let me tell you a very quick story about one hotel where main goal was to make our guests happy. And by the way, this hotel, they applied Agile three years ago and Agile Transformation helped them to buy new five hotels, uh, double their profit, and make a lot of happiness for their guests. In this picture, you see housekeepers. And imagine that each housekeeper has a goal to understand a guest's needs and deliver this information to whole organization. They have special serum system. And if housekeeper met guest and understand their needs, she or he sent information to special serum system and hotel as a one big unit, try to fix it or improve something. And um, when I travel before COVID, okay, I should say, before COVID, I travel each week almost. And in each hotel around the world, I saw just reception and housekeepers. I didn't see executives. I didn't see managers, I didn't see sales and marketer, marketers, right? But this is frontline. And in the hotel, they receive information from our customers and they help um, uh, and they deliver this information for others' departments. And what we have, and I would say that I believe that on the one hand, we should understand our customer needs. On the other hand, we should do it very fast and be as a one team with our customers. And if our customer change, we will we have to be able to change our processes and our culture, for example, and our product very quickly. That's why this is first law or first beliefs that we should care about our customers. And we should remember that, for example, HR department, they have their own customers, right? Okay. And the second one, one of my favorite. I know many extremely great agile experts around the world who always tell about agile, it's mindset, it's new culture, and it's wonderful. I really believe that agile, it's mindset. 
But to sell this idea to executives, I'm not sure if it's enough. That's why we need to measure, I, I strongly believe that we need to measure success of, uh, success of agile transformation by money, by a profit organization, and measure it in the beginning of changes, in the middle, and during this journey, because this journey doesn't have the end. And let me tell you a story uh, which helped us understood that agile transformation helped paid extra $10 million as a profit for one organization during one year. This is TV company. This TV company based in the United States, and we created several cross-functional teams. We apply agile in sales and we measure profit. And one day our data dealers, we call uh, our data department analytics data dealers, they told us, look, you created extra $10 million of profit. And after that, we took this information and we ran to our executives and we told them, look, Agile, it's a magic pill. It helped us to grow and you see numbers. Let's scale that. And this secret is about, or my beliefs or my experience is about that we have to measure. We should understand why we're doing those changes in the organization. And money is one of uh, very clear feedback that we're doing our Agile transformation well. And it helps to sell Agile to executives because I know that around the world, we have many departments, IT departments who apply Agile. And sometimes some of them, they have difficulties to apply Agile to executives. If you have the, those difficulties, please type in chat plus, and I will know that I'm not alone in this journey. Anyway, next one, number three. I had many, many different agile transformation in different industry, hospitality, healthcare, brokers, manufacturing, many, many. And you know what? The most unsuccessful agile transformation I had because we didn't involve executives. And sometimes I felt like in this game, like you build something, you put yourself as an agile coach, you have a lot of, uh, you think that you have a lot of success, but each time executives or their decisions or their new processes, they just take out uh, from your towel some pieces and everything is broken. And let me tell you one of examples. One day we applied agile transformation in sales in one big brokers company. And we were so successful in sales. We increased our sales. We changed our culture in um, several departments, but we didn't try. We even didn't try. We didn't touch our executives. And after several months, everything is gone because they decided to change processes. They didn't give um, freedom for making decisions. They didn't um, support changes of uh, motivation. I will talk about that later. They didn't give us opportunity to change some processes and everything is gone. And we know that agile transformation, it's not cheap process. And many companies, they invest money in the beginning in agile transformation. They try to create several teams in IT or even in sales. But after that, nothing happened. And unfortunately, sometimes it's just spending money. That's why I believe that we have to um, inspire and um, invite executives in agile transformation from the first day of changes. They should understand what is going on. And uh, here I have a very quickly example. We apply agile in pilot teams. And then when we grow up uh, by numbers, we go to executives and th then we sell Agile transformation in executive level, and we create a cross-functional team we, uh, with different vice presidents. We create common goals. We create retrospectives, and after that, we create agile transformation from the top and from um, departments and employees as well. Okay, let's go next. Number four. Number four will be interesting for people who mm, who has some experience with sales and marketing. Because in sales and marketing, we have sometimes completely different um, sales funnel. 
that's why we lose a lot of money uh, from marketing uh, budget from um, company just because we have broken funnel. And when you create agile transformation, and if you start, by the way, if you start agile transformation from sales and involve marketing, first of all, you will see um, very big changes because salespeople, they communicate with all departments around the organization, right? But if you help them, not if, let's call when, and you help them to be as a one team because their common goal to understand our customer needs and deliver uh, value as soon as possible, only as a one team, as a one unit, they can do it very successful. One more case study for you. It was um, uh, one uh, company, it was B2B sales. And we realized that sales and marketing, they didn't communicate at all. And we created cross-functional teams. We had common planning sessions and common retrospectives. And you see numbers how we um, grew by, uh, by uh, sales um, approach, uh, sales results. But we also applied more than 1,000, 500 sales um, ideas, innovations in organization. And we're, when we're talking about classic uh, companies with classic um, management, let's call it like this. We imagine that we have a board, we have executives. And you know what? Sometimes it's not just even possible to create an applied, okay, applied um, 1,500 ideas in organization from top to down. That's why when we have cross-functional teams, when we invite our sales and marketing and they work together, we have a lot of innovations, a lot of ideas, and people, they make it happen because they believe, because they created those ideas. Anyway, I would say, and I had pretty big experience in agile sales because this is uh, what I'm doing almost every day. In agile and sales, if you apply uh, agile and sales and create uh, cross-functional teams with marketing, you will increase sales for sure. Okay, let's go next. Next. Number five, collaboration between departments. Uh, when I have different surveys around companies, many of them, they told me like, Marina, we have silos. We don't have, we have lack of communication between different departments. Help us, please. Okay, how we can help? We can create cross-functional teams. And I will show you, this is real structure. This is picture from one TV company in the United States. We took different people from different departments and we created cross-functional teams and we changed motivation, but we also help um, create a communication between different departments and between different executives in different departments also. And I would say, let me show you something that I really love. Oh, oh, oh. When we create cross-functional teams, we kill silos because we have people who communicate with each other every day. And if you have a request how to help people with, uh, how to help um, organization with um, communication, Create cross-functional teams, but be ready to change structure for that. Okay, next one. Change motivation. This is very interesting topic because we're talking, okay, we should uh, forget about KPIs. We should change motivation. I would say, because I'm from business part, I'm from sales and marketing. I'm not sure if we can just forget about all KPIs around the world from Monday. This is salespeople. This is um, people who really want to earn money, right? But I also believe that we should change motivation and create team motivation because when we create cross-functional teams in one team, you have different people. For example, in this picture, this is interesting case study from healthcare department where we had cross-functional teams with completely different people, uh, completely different doctors from different uh, different types of doctors. We changed motivation. We create new type of motivation from profit. And each team members had some percentage from profit. And even security guy who just opened the door 
he had motivation. But when we involve him to teamwork, when we change motivation, he has a lot of energy because he felt that he was a part of company, part of big team, and he worked for profit. And I, I had, uh, I, I have many different types of motivation, but motivation from profit is one of my favorite. That's why. Think about motivation, think about common motivation and be ready to change different types of motivation around the company. And it will help you to have um, agile transformation a little easier, okay? And number seven, this is HR. Let me tell you here uh, some stories. When we start agile transformation, we change culture of organization we change structure of organization and we change processes. And for HR, it's huge work because on the one hand, when you start agile transformation, first year, you have a chance to lose about 30% of people, of employees. And for HR, it is big deal, okay? The big problem. But then you start to uh, change structure of organization. And then, okay, let's create a cross-functional team. Let's create, let's invite sales, marketer, uh, marketers. Let's invite IT and uh, logistic and financial uh, person. But where and how they're going to report? Who will be one leader of this team? What about report structure? What about motivation structure? And we go to HR and ask to change those processes and create new motivation and, um, and um, create a new uh, responsibilities for different people. Because before one person did one thing and now she or he has different responsibilities. But also when we have a very deep agile transformation, we need to hire people with special values because it's, it's critically important to have special people with special values, but how to hire them? It's a it's big question. That's why I believe, and I always do it, I involved HR in agile transformation from the beginning because HR department should be so agile and be able to have very fast reaction for everything you guys as, as agile experts are doing in the organization. That's why this is one of my secrets also. And let me show you some conclusions. And I feel like let's have a, um, some questions. Let me, and you can take a picture of this um, screen. And let's have some uh, questions in your chat. And I would love to answer. I, I would love to listen your story, not listen, just read and help you and answer for questions. This is my experience. This is what I use in, ed, in each Agile transformation. And I hope it will be helpful for you also. And any questions in our chat? It was fast, right? Because I'm Agile. Please type your uh, questions if you have any. While you're typing, I will have a summary. First of all, I have never um, agreed for contract with company without involving uh, executives. It's first step because I always need their support. The second step, HR. HR became very active from the beginning. Then we choose pilot teams and we usually start from sales and marketing because we need numbers. After that, we're selling agile to executive level and then we start agile transformation in executive level. And after that, we scale agile, we change motivation and we try to be very agile. Okay, let's see your uh, questions. What are some of your examples of motivation that might not be traditional? Um, I would say it's still not very traditional to have percentage from profit of organization because not, comp not all companies are ready to open numbers and show clear profit for all employees. This is not traditional uh, motivation. 
And for salespeople, because usually I'm from sales and I usually had my own motivation, individual KPIs, and I didn't care about other salespeople. Even sometimes salespeople, they try to steal clients from each other. That's why um, common motivation for them, I would say team motivation is not very uh, traditional, I would say. Okay. Are those cross-functional teams co-located? Um, it's, it depends on the organization. I mean, it's um, sometimes it's different uh, countries, different departments. It, it depends on structure. But when we change structure, and uh, I love Lego series play as one of great tools which help us to change structure of organization. We create customer first and create processes from our customers and create cross-functional cross teams based on our customers. Let me know if uh, I answer for your questions. Okay. How do you help executives maintain their commitment to agile transformation they initiate and not revert to what to follow and under pressure? Um, after four months, after beginning of agile transformation, we usually apply retrospectives or uh, common um, strategy sessions, like common goals, like um, like uh, executive backlog and all this stuff in executive level. That's why I believe we have to help them to change their mindset. And if you, when, when you change um, mindset in executive level, it help them, it will help you as agile coach to have a, uh, their daily support because they will support you and all processes, processes and all initiatives. But to change waterfall, for sure, only executive can change structure, culture and processes. It's big changes. Mm -hmm. Um, leadership, for sure. Um, leadership, is, it, it is one of the biggest challenging, right? And first of all, um, this is a very good question. Um, because we apply edge on executive level, and then we have commitment, like which numbers we're going to show in whole organization, which we're not going to show in all organization. I mean, it's not easy, it's step by step. But it's a very good question. And I worked as a coach with the executives daily. It's, um, you should have a very strong coach who will help them in this journey. Because I was executive, I had my own uh, transformation and I would say it wasn't easy. Okay, what metrics made the most sense to use the success of young and functional teams? Uh, which metrics? Uh, sales. If you apply, it depends uh, what kind of um, uh, teams do you have. Why I love? Why do I love apply agile in sales? Because you can measure very quickly by money, by profit, by sales. If you don't have sales, you can uh, measure by speed of delivery, for example. And again, you can measure by money as well. I mean, it, uh, you need uh, very good data people and analytics because I believe in organization, you can measure everything by profit and by money. Even if you, you, your team created one idea and this idea stop um, produce some product which was um, negative profit, it means that you and your team helped to earn money to the organization, right? Oh my gosh, uh, this is a very good question about sales and IT. I love common retrospectives between sales and IT department because salespeople for last 150 years at least, their main goal was to sell and forget about customers, about, uh, forget about others department. But now when they sell something that it's just impossible to create for IT department or they sell 
too much product, like IT product, and it's just impossible to deliver for customers, our customers became unhappy. That's why we create common retrospectives, monthly retrospectives, when we in, invite in one room sales and, um, and IT department, and we have common retrospective. And what is going, uh, what do we do well? What we should improve? And salespeople, they receive feedback from IT department also. Okay, any questions? And uh, I have a question. What are you going, you had a lot of um, great speakers today. What is your actions? Because um, I, I'm sure you inspired, but what will be your actions? What are you going to try? What are you going to do differently? I hope we have a little time for that question, right? One question, what is your actions? What would you, would you like to try? And my second question, from one to 10, how was useful this information for you? Where 10 is maximum and one, oh my gosh, I knew everything about that, Marina, nothing new. And you can find me in LinkedIn and ask any questions because I have a huge passion about agile and sales and agile transformation. Yeah, and by the way, um, uh, while you're uh, writing answers, for sure, um, this is a very good question, how to help our managers to be leaders. And one of um, strategy here to help them to run workshops about um, servant leadership for their uh, employees. And while they're running workshops, they learn and they feel by themselves. This is one of uh, secrets as well. But for sure, we worked a lot and help managers to be servant leaders. Yeah. Uh, in Agile and Sales, we call um, sprint review demo. We have common demos where our salespeople, they show their results from sprint because we have weekly sprints. Usually we use a Sway system, but let me uh, tell you a very quick one story. One day, our sales uh, team, they had a sprint goal to understand um, customer needs and by the way, they were pretty successful as a sales team. They achieved their sales targets, but they realized that they want to know more about their customers. And their customers, they told that them, look, guys, um, thank you for your uh, product. But when we receive product, it's, uh, it's broken because logistic uh, company, um, they had a partner in logistic and delivery of this product wasn't very good. And imagine salespeople, they realized that because their customers told them that it, almost each second uh, product received and it's broken and our customers were very unhappy. And they decided to, to show those results in demo. And they invited executives from logistic department, uh, CEO and different executives and sales team delivered this information. Imagine what executives from logistic department felt. But anyway, demo, it's an amazing uh, meeting where different departments can show their results and uh, ask some feedback from different uh, departments also. Great job. I believe um, that retrospective is the one of a key of success of agile transformation. And unfortunately, when agile, say, uh, agile coaches leave the company, uh, first meeting which canceled is retrospective. I believe it's a huge mistake. You can cancel er everything, but not retrospective. And if you have, imagine if you have um, one team have weekly retrospective. In each retrospective, each team create 10 ideas usually. They apply five. Imagine how many uh, improvements and new ideas they apply to organization during the year. What if you have 10 um, teams? What if you have 2,000 people and 200 teams, right? 
for example, this hotel where which I mentioned today, they um, they applied more than 500 ideas per, per year. That's why retrospective is a key. For sure, we should we we can't say like okay now we're friends. Uh, forget about Silas. No, but common retrospectives, sure, it's a great idea. But again, you need someone who really loves people and help them to find um, common goals, um, different to be able to be open, trust to each other. You need people who really will help uh, create this um, culture. Because for example, when I run retrospectives between sales and IT people, sometimes I create si uh, silent retrospective. What does it mean? Where nobody can say anything, just write in sticky notes because salespeople, they're usually very strong extroverts. Uh, IT people, they're usually introverts and we need to, be, to give them opportunity to be hear, heard by sales, right? And that's why it's really important to have a very good facilitator. Uh, thank you very much for your feedback. I, you see, I'm, I was so fast. Anyway, I'm here to answer for any questions and tell you different stories if we have time. We have time, right? Where is our organization? Anyway, let me tell you some stories like we, we have 15, time, uh, 15 minutes. Mm, okay, I have some interesting story because um, I applied Agile in uh, several different healthcare departments. And one, uh, health, uh, one clinic was about pregnancy. And imagine in our spring goal, we had a goal uh, pregnancy because it was a special clinic where women, they couldn't be pregnant by themselves. I don't know how to say it in English, but uh, they had uh, to have some procedure to be able to be pregnant. And our doctors, we had a goal to help uh, women to be pregnant as much as possible because we realized that if we, we will help um, our clients be happy, they will suggest our clinic to others future mom right and yeah probably yes exactly yeah and um, it was amazing to be part of the team which um, had a goal to help people create new lives and we also had uh, agile transformation in one clinic counselor and in this industry unfortunately between doctors, there are so many um, lack of communication. That's why sometimes, unfortunately, they don't have a quick reaction to help people. And um, that's why to create a cross-functional teams with different doctors, with uh, common goals to survive lives, it just, it just amazing um, from agile trans transformation perspective because it's about life. And they have a lot of silos between different doctors and they have a lack of communication. That's why there are so many interesting stories. And imagine, uh, for example, this TV company, which I mentioned today, um, this TV company, um, they are on the market about 27 years and uh, they sell, it's TV shopping company and they sell jewelry uh, in a TV, um, on TV. And their average age of clients is Seven, uh, 65 plus, like 75 years. And one day we realized when we created cross-functional teams that our marketing department, they decided to, uh, um, to create a lot of advertising in TikTok or Instagram. But we realized that probably when you're 85 or 75, maybe you're not very interesting about TikTok yet, right? And we try to help them to understand who is our customers, what is their, their need. And we created a lot of value proposition. It's one of my favorite tools where we try to understand pains of our customers. First of all, it was big pain for the company because each day people stop watch TV. 
And this is sales uh, channel is almost dying every day. And we need to find the way how to sell jewelry, but not on TV. But imagine 27 years, they had one sales um, um, approach and now they have to change. Other way they will die. You can find me in uh, LinkedIn and answer uh, and ask any questions, guys. And uh, and I can sa uh, send you Sway System Guide. It's Sales with Agile. I wrote a guide, and this guide was translated for twelve different um, languages around the world. And I have a huge passion to change salespeople because, unfortunately, salespeople they continue push clients. They continue. Um, call to have a cold calls and try to sell you something and you're just thinking are you kidding me like why are you doing that you need to understand what i really need as your customers and sometimes we have a, a lot of um, funny situations with banks because when uh, sales people they call you from bank and they try to sell you credit card for example and you try to say, tell them, look, guys, I have cash. I would love to have a, dep a deposit, right? And they say, sorry, it's not my department. Bye. And just, okay, forget about that. And it's about uh, silos between marketing and sales, between one department and uh, credit department and deposit department, right? You can send me a request in LinkedIn, and I will send you a free copy of uh, a Sway Guide. Let me try to, yeah. Any questions? Thank you for doing this session. Is it possible to share the link to the guide in this chat? Yeah, sure, just a second. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, Thank one you. more voice. I'm so happy. It's not easy to talk with yourself, okay? <laughs> okay, let's see. I know how to make it happen. I will share a QR code, or maybe a link will be better, right? Let me. Yeah, if you have a um, link in the cloud, you can share it or you could share as a as an attachment. I'm not sure how that works. Yeah, um, just I will. Sometimes okay, uh, that is disabled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marina, I, I was in the uh, switching between the two, so I was, but I did include your sway. Uh, if you go to my, uh, let me just share maybe my screen. Are you talking I'm, about the Sway PDF or? Yeah, I, I would share. Yeah, yeah. You, you have I have it okay. here. Um, so if you go to the mural, um, if you double click on Sway Guide, you can download it there. So I'll Perfect. drop the, actually, I'll just drop it directly to yours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank so you So you can much. also check out um, Marina's website. And this goes for everybody else. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and let me, one. while we have a couple of minutes, let me show you an example of very good retrospective because I found that I have it, okay? How Great. much time do we have? About five minutes, right? Four? About five minutes, yeah. Five minutes, okay, perfect. I will show you something else. I love to show something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, look, this is, um, I can, I, if you write me in LinkedIn, I can uh, send it to you as well. But here are steps of retrospectives and each teams, they have always um, something to re remember what was good. What did we achieve or what kind of challenges did, did we have, especially in sales, because what they can learn from each other about challenges. They can scale best practice uh, with each other. That's why you can take a picture of that and ask your uh, sales and ask your executives something similar because we have a clear uh, system of our meetings. It's very clear. We know exactly what we're asking. And let me show you something else. Something else, something else. I wanted to show you goals, but I don't have them here. Okay, anyway. Mm -hmm. In this case, I can show you our sales backlog, like we have one minute. Uh, you will find it in Sway Guide. 
But the main idea, this is our uh, executive backlog or sales backlog, where we are thinking each month about strategy clients, about our product, because it's about prioritization. We should understand exactly with, with which product we are going to the market today. And maybe tomorrow it will be completely different. And it's about value of proposition of our customers, because our main goal not to not sell anymore. Our main goal to understand our needs of our customers and make it faster than our competitors. And this is my favorite part when we're thinking about innovations, when we're thinking about opportunities, like okay, how we can grow. And when you ask uh, such questions, like okay, what kind of innovations in um, board? Uh, level we can apply what should we improve in our communication inside i mean there are so many things uh, to um, to share with each other and this is how our sales backlog looks like okay any questions Yeah, put them in the chat or. Yeah, I see one very good question. Um, very good question about commission. Let me read it very quickly. For sure, uh, your, uh, Ricardo, for sure, if we involve HR from the beginning, nothing happened like this. But when we create new processes from motivation perspective, sometimes nobody ready to change motivation. But I know that it works. That's why I always say, okay, let's uh, create a pilot team. Let's find the worst sales department. Let's change motivation. Just one piece of your business. Uh, it's there are no risk uh, to try because they're, they're not doing well even right now. And we try, and then when everybody realizes that it works, then we scale around orga organization. And in this moment. HR supports us because they need to change a lot of processes. Um, very good question. I would say about commission. I'm from sales. That's why probably I understand salespeople very well. And if you take their motivation from Monday and you will tell them, okay, welcome new world, it's agile. I think I'm afraid they will kill you because it, it was their main motivation money, right? But to help them to have evolution and create, okay, I have a percentage, I have KPIs, individual KPIs, and John has. But if we to, uh, achieve together, we will have extra team motivation, some money. It will help us to work together. And then step by step, um, we uh, we change. We always change motivation because I'm not sure if individual KPIs works in executive level as well. Because sometimes if you work with the executives, the problem is that um, a vice president of marketing has one type of um, motivation. Sales for uh, sale, vice president of sales has completely different, and then and they against to each other. And this is problem from top. And we scale this problem around the organization. But it's good to comment. Yes, it's not easy. But again, I'm not talking about revolution. I'm talking about evolution. We need to support the company to change culture, structure, and processes. Other way, company will die. There are two choices, to be elephant, and move very slowly or have some transformation. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's painful. Yes, we'll, we'll lose some people, but it's like detox in health, you know, when you, and business needs to, to be healthy and it's about health. Okay. Any questions? I'm from sales, okay? It's difficult It's difficult to keep silent for me. <laughs> I have a quick question. I wish you, yeah, please. 
Uh, um, have you, how much experience do you have in the healthcare industry, specifically in the US? I'm in the healthcare space and having real big challenges with a new joint venture between healthcare company and innovation company that came together for delivering new healthcare services. And we're having a difficult time with aligning everyone around yeah. the, the end customer. Yeah, I didn't have, in the United States, I didn't have uh, healthcare experiments yet, but I have a lot uh, in overseas and Europe. That's why I would love to share some uh, examples and some presentations with you. I had several talks about uh, agent healthcare. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we're done.